I don't know if you've noticed or it's just my tech Twitter bubble, but everyone seems to be talking about SQLite. I personally hadn't used SQLite until filming this video, but it might just be a very light and efficient database for your next project. So let's dive deeper into it and understand what makes SQLite so good and efficient and why everyone keeps talking about it. I wanted to actually build something here with SQLite to better understand it. And I've built this to-do list app but it actually has a couple more features than that. I can choose a project and tag. I can prioritize my to-dos and I can change the status as well. And I've used the better SQLite 3 package here to do that. But let's first understand how SQLite actually works. On SQLite's website, they have so many pages about every question I've had. And one of the pages is called how SQLite works. And they're saying that SQLite is a software library that translates high level disk input output requests generated by an application into low level input output operations that can be carried out by the operating system. And in order to better understand why it's different than the other ones, let's look at this section. There are many SQL based database management systems available besides SQLite. Common options include MySQL, PostgreSQL and SQL Server. In all of these systems, you use the SQL language to communicate with the application just like SQLite. But these other systems differ from SQLite in important respects. SQLite is a serverless software library, whereas the other systems are client server based. Now, I'm not really going to go into the rest of this, but an SQLite database is a single ordinary file on disk with a well-defined file format. With other system, a database is usually a large number of separated files hidden away in obscure directories of the file system or even spread across multiple machines. But to SQLite, a complete database is just an ordinary disk file. I mean, I knew SQLite is light, but I didn't know it's actually this light. And in my app, I can actually see this file and I have a couple more here because I'm using the wall mode here, which makes the database a little bit more performant, but I, this doesn't open for me, but basically the whole database would be this file. Then here, and also be careful with these files because if you have personal info in there, make sure you're not committing them to your repo. Now the one file on system is the biggest strength and the biggest weakness of SQLite. It's the biggest strength because it makes SQLite so light that you can use it for a lot of applications, but it's also its biggest weakness because you can't use parallel writing to it because whenever you write to the file, the SQLite logs the file so you don't get overridden data. And it also makes distributed databases very hard to achieve with SQLite. Now there is a bit more to the SQLite architecture, but I'm not really gonna go down into it, but this is basically the whole architecture of SQLite. And I can show you a more simplified one here. It goes through a few steps to get from the SQL code into the operations for the virtual file system and to the actual file. Now there's a great video about comparing SQLite versus PostgreSQL performance by Anton Putra. And it's a great video because it shows the difference between SQLite and PostgreSQL. But the test here is made with one big caveat. And it's basically that PostgreSQL is a multi-threaded database. But in this test, Anton has made it a single-threaded application on a server to match what's possible with SQLite. I'm gonna recommend watching this video if you wanna see how it works in full. It, it does a great job of explaining how it actually works in the client server system of PostgreSQL and how the test is set up. But here we can see that all of the latency for all of the operations like insert, update, delete, and select is bigger for PostgreSQL application and much, much smaller for SQLite application. And you can actually run a lot more SQLite operations at the same time because it doesn't take as much latency. And this video shows how fast SQLite actually is and why it's a great tool for, and why it might be a great tool for your project. Now, of course, SQLite has a page of appropriate uses for SQLite and it shows a, some of the use cases for SQLite where it's gonna do a great job and when to not use SQLite and use the client server RDBMS that, that might work better. And there's also a checklist to help you choose 
the right database. So what have we learned so far? SQLite is very light, efficient and a fast database. And it has one single file where the whole database is stored, which is its biggest strength and its biggest weakness. And we also know that compared to a single threaded PostgreSQL application or server, it outperforms by a lot. And you might be wondering how does it actually make it popular in the tech Twitter world? Well, in the recent years, there's been a lot that has been done in SQLite and around SQLite that actually makes it a good choice for most applications. One of them is a tool called Terso, which makes SQLite great for production and it allows for replicating your database across multiple instances, which I've already mentioned is one of the weaknesses of SQLite. Another great similar tool is called Bedrock by Expensify and it basically allows for the same thing. You can replicate your SQLite database and use it for distributed systems or you can distribute your data across multiple instances. And Expensify have a great article explaining how they scaled SQLite to 4 million QPS on a single server, which is a great read. I'm gonna recommend reading this. I'm gonna add it to the list of links in my description below. And with this and the other tools that built around SQLite to basically make it a better offering for databases and kind of have the shortcomings fixed. This actually makes SQLite a great choice for uh, most of the applications, especially if you're building something new, you're just trying stuff out. SQLite can be a great choice and it, and it is actually very fast. The application I built with SQLite, I don't know if it's Astro or SQLite, but this is a very fast and very snappy application for me. Um, you can see here, no latency or nothing. All of these are added, changed, great. Um, I've also, by the way, been using cursor to build this and other stuff. I'm working on my personal website and I'm going to be making a video on cursor as well. So I'd stay tuned for that. But anyways, yeah, SQLite is very fast and there's many use cases where SQLite has actually been used in production for large scale systems. And I think also that's one of the reasons why it's becoming more popular. Like any space, tech has its own influencers. And whenever people are choosing a new tool or whatever to use for their website, they're gonna follow whatever the influencer is talking about. And for example, Aaron Francis has been making a lot of videos on SQLite and he's actually done a full course on SQLite with a lot of videos, a lot of tutorials, and, and all of his videos are great to and all of his videos are great explaining what SQLite is and he has also interviews with people that use SQLite in production. One of them is D. He's the creator of Ruby on Rails and he's used SQLite for one of his products called Campfire, which is um, a Slack kind of application. And he goes a little bit in the how it's used on that podcast, the show with Aaron Francis. Also recommend watching it. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the biggest reasons why it's becoming more popular and also all the tools that are being built around it to make it even better. And all of that is possible because SQLite is actually open source and it's been maintained by the same three people for 20 plus years. They created, they've been working on it. And in recent life with all the open source drama, I think this is a great example of building a great tool, allowing people to use it for whatever they want to use it and making it better for 20 plus years. And because of the whole open source culture, people have been building stuff on top of it to make it even better. And I think we are seeing the results of all of that. And that's why it's gaining popularity over the years. And I'm gonna leave you with one more page that the SQLite website has, which is called the Code of Ethics. Now, for some history and background, um, there's a book or letters or something that's called the Rule of Saint Benedict, which is ancient, like 1500 years ago. And the instrument of good works from chapter four is basically the rule, but this code of ethics has proven its metal in thousands of diverse communities for over 1500 years and has served as a baseline for many civil law codes since the time of Charlemagne. The way that they frame this is no one is required to follow the rule, to know the rule or even think that the rule is a good idea. The founder of SQLite believes that anyone who follows the rule will keep a happier and more productive life, but individuals are free to dispute or ignore that advice if they wish. And in other words, they're saying, we will treat you this way regardless of how you treat us. And I'm gonna leave you with this. So check it out. Um, check out SQLite. I, and I'm barely scratching the surface of SQLite here. It's such a great tool. There's so much to go into it. I'm probably gonna be making more videos about it. So stay tuned for that as well. But that's been pretty much it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day. Happy coding. Bye.